everyone and welcome back to my channel and also welcome back to my environmental news series where I either talk about a specific article or other current events related to climate change, sustainability, and the environment. Today we are going to be discussing a very big topic. We are going to be talking about how Biden's administration choices will impact progress, what the administration has planned to tackle climate change, and what control of both the House and Senate will mean for climate change action these next four years. I am recording this prior to Inauguration Day, and this video is coming out after Inauguration Day. So I am hoping and praying that that day goes well and that you are watching this in a future where there was a successful transfer of power and that day went well. Before we get started though, if you are new here, make sure to subscribe to the channel if you want to see more videos on environmental news. We have a lot to talk about, so without further delay, let's get started. Let's first talk briefly about some of the key administration choices that Biden has made. He has added more than half a dozen climate change staffers to his White House team. This includes drawing from the ranks of green groups, environmental justice advocates, and former Democratic administration officials. In other words, we have people with experience working with policy, a more diverse group that cares about environmental justice and will make sure that is at the forefront of their policy, and people who have already been leaders in very significant groups that try to protect the environment. In other words, he's covering a lot of bases with his choices and is making an attempt to make sure there is a diverse group of people working for him that have many points of views and experiences. Some big names I want to highlight include Gina McCarthy, who I had the great fortune of seeing speak in the past. She is a former EPA administrator under Obama, and after leaving the EPA, went to become part of the NRDC, eventually becoming president of the NRDC. In the past four years, the NRDC has been well known for suing the EPA several times when, when they have tried to roll back environmental policy. I think she is a powerful voice and is not afraid to fight to make climate change action happen. Michael S. Reagan was selected to be the administrator of the EPA. He previously had worked for the EPA from 1998 to 2008, went on to work for the Environmental Defense Fund, another great organization, and in 2017 was selected to serve as the Secretary of the North Carolina Department of Environmental Quality. This is another person with experience working with environmental policy and has done some great work with an organization such as EDF that really does fight to protect the environment. So another great and powerful voice when it comes to environmental policy and someone that knows their stuff. There are lots of other big names that are going to be a part of this administration, but this is already going to be long, so I encourage you to go look them up yourself, find out who they are, what they have done, but in general, they really are a solid team and are quite promising. Let's now jump to what they have planned so far. They have a pretty ambitious agenda. It's not the most ambitious of the candidates we saw run this past election, but they're still very ambitious. They do still have some big goals that will be difficult to accomplish these next four years. The main areas they want to focus on are a clean energy revolution and environmental justice. They want to have an aggressive shift to clean energy, a goal of carbon neutrality by 2050, and massive federal investment to make these changes happen. Biden plans to undo most, if not all, of the Trump's environmental rollbacks using executive orders. Trump had repealed or weakened 125 environmental regulations, like protecting endangered species and opening protected lands to fossil fuel and logging developments. These are just a few of the orders that Biden wants to go back. Just reversing all of this policy will take up a lot of time and effort. Then from there, Biden's team will finally be able to shift their focus from undoing the damage done these past four years 
to focusing on making more progress. For starters, they want the US to rejoin the Paris Agreement. They believe the Green New Deal is a crucial framework moving forward, and they want to do all of this while ensuring environmental justice is always included. It won't be easy. They have a lot of work, and it's our job as citizens to hold them accountable and ensure they don't break these promises they have made. Finally, let's talk about the House and Senate. Now that Democrats hold majority in both the House and Senate, it will become much easier for, for climate change policy to get passed. A lot of the policy Biden wants to implement would have been instantly stopped by a Republican Senate majority, but with a Democratic Senate majority, this will give more leeway to allow these policies to get passed. There are, of course, still some Democrats who might not support some of the policy, and that can be an issue at times, but overall it will be easier to get policy passed. The judicial landscape is actually where the Biden administration might face some difficulties. With a 6-3 Republican majority in the Supreme Court and more than 200 Republican judicial appointments these past four years, lawsuits from states and industries that would be affected by these policy changes could bog down forward momentum on climate change action. However, if they do make it through these legal challenges, these policies will become more durable policies. So there's a lot going on. The next four years will be very difficult to say the least. There's both a lot of support for climate change action, but also still a lot of people against it. Biden's administration is diverse, experienced and knowledgeable. The House and Senate are in favor, but there is a lot of work that needs to be done and plenty of barriers that will slow down progress. We at least now have some hope that change will happen. We'll have to wait and see if the administration will keep their promises. And if they don't, we need to be ready to continue to fight for change. That was a lot of information, so I'm going to end things there. As always, there are plenty of links I've provided in the description below so you can do your own research and what is going on with climate change these next four years. But for now, that is all the time I have for today's video. If you liked it, make sure to leave a like down below, that way I know, and also subscribe to the channel to join the journey to living more sustainably. If you'd like to keep up on my own journey to living more sustainably in between uploads, you can also follow me on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter, which are all linked down below. Thank you again so much for watching, and I'll see you guys next time. Mm -hmm.